Hello everyone, SF Logic Ninja here. You can call me David Earl. You know I don't care. Uh, been a long time. Been super duper busy. Um, doing lots of cool stuff. Uh, got to work on Once Upon a Monster with Double Fine and Peter McConnell, um, which is a really awesome Connect game. That uh, if you have kids or if you like Sesame Street or if you grew up on Sesame Street like I did, um, not literally on Sesame Street. I mean like I watched the show. Well, you get it. I also got to work on another game called. Uh, Happy Action Theater. Yeah, it's by Double Fine as well. Happy Action Theater. These guys are totally awesome. I kind of consider them the Pixar video games because they're just unbelievably creative. Um, and I was supporting a lot of other composers on that job. Um, you know, they'll get credited in the game as well. But it was a really cool, like, composer jam. And, and it was really uh, nerve-wracking. Had Tim Schafer actually, you know, personally approving my cues and stuff like that. That was pretty crazy, considering the guy is, like pretty much one of the video game gods in my book. So lots of, lots of stuff. Uh, but all of that aside, I wanted to talk about a couple of things today because I'm kind of excited about a couple of things and I had a moment. So thought I would uh, hip you guys to a couple of things. First of all, uh, you'll notice I keep looking down. The reason I'm looking down is that I finally got myself one of these. Actually, I didn't get it myself. It was a beautiful gift from Beth's family where they all... Uh, gathered around a table and kind of put all their money together and got me an iPad too. So thanks, Beth's family. You guys are awesome. Um, but there's this program that just came out. You may have heard of it, but if not, you should definitely check it out. It's called Geo, G-E-O. And um, basically what it's like, it's like, I always liked on guitar how I could pick up a guitar and sort of intuitively find melodies and things like that. For some reason, guitar is very intuitive and the patterns that it creates are really cool. So Jordan Rudis and a couple of other folks uh, got together and created this controller on iPad 2. It's actually a synth, uh, but it's also a MIDI controller. You can hook it up to your MIDI system via Wi-Fi MIDI, which is crazy. But check it out. So let's see if I can hold it here. Luckily, I have big hands. So what you do is you, these are kind of like strings, and then you have these fretted notes. So it's just like playing guitar. It's like hammer-ons and frets and stuff, and you can slide, and you can play individual notes. And then if you go up between strings, it starts going up octaves, right? Really ridiculously fun. And then, like I said, under MIDI configuration, you can go in and you can choose a destination for sp specific MIDI controllers as well as notes. Uh, and then you have MIDI Wi-Fi, so this will hook into your system via network MIDI. And then you can also send MIDI internally within the iPad, which is pretty ridiculous. So anyway, I, I'm getting a huge kick out of this, and any of you who aren't natural keyboard players might see this as a really cool option for putting, uh, putting notes in your Logic session, or Pro Tools, or whatever you happen to use. Um, so that's totally awesome. And the other thing that I think is totally awesome is this program called SampleWiz. I'm gonna send you a link to, um, to a video that shows these guys playing around with this stuff. But the cool thing about SampleWiz is that basically it's a sampler, it's built for iPad. You can also get this stuff on an iPhone. Uh, I don't know if it's ever gonna be available for like Android and stuff like that. But basically you can, you know, you have these kind of cool sample patches but what's really neat is that you can sample your own stuff what's really neat is you can sample your own stuff and uh so you know that's cool you know you can sample yourself but there's also different types of sampling um classic is like you play it low it plays a low note you play high you know, it speeds up and it plays higher pitch. But you can also go to granular, and what this does is it's one of those pitch independent of time, um, and time independent of pitch. So the time is always the same, like how long I spoke for is going to be the same, but the pitch changes. 
I should probably raise it a couple octaves so it's not so low. So I can speed it up. <laughs> so you can you can start doing sound design and do this kind of ridiculous stuff. Um, then they have this other one called Modern where what it does... So the human voice is kind of like a filter, right? We have these things called formants, which is... Uh, even though I sing up and down in pitch, I may be singing the same pitch as like a woman, but my voice sounds different even though we're singing the same pitch. So when you go to this modern version, it's doing some like form and balancing. So it keeps the thing sounding like me, even though I'm playing high. So having that in an app is pretty ridiculous, um, first of all. But then you also have this thing where you can go to like looping mode and you see the waveform and you can like adjust your loop area and then it's multi-touch. Uh, and and what's funny is that I don't normally um, so anyway sample is totally awesome you should check it out um, so here's the deal I don't normally the iPad and the iPhone have they have a lot of instruments and a lot of things that's been made that have been made for doing music they've got GarageBand they've got beatboxes they've got you know Electribe and all that kind of stuff um, but there are some that are totally usable and I've actually used them on on fairly big projects and um, they have a uh, weavy band is totally amazing it um, has physically modeled uh, horns and things like that and you actually play it kind of like a horn then there's stuff like uh, animog okay so moog who are like the company is like the originator of all musical synthesizers they came out with a uh, a program called animog I think I yeah, I have it downloaded on here too. It's hard to hold this thing. So they're not exactly keys, they're like these little strips. And what's funny is that um, on old synths that uh, I used to, I, w I actually learned on a synth where you had to plug in each module using quarter inch patch cables. And, uh, and it was a Moog and it took up a whole room, but this is using a lot of the same technology, but just kind of like smashed into a little iPad 2. And it's got these, these are so cool because these are actually, the way I remember these type of keys was they were like little ribbons. So when you press on them, they played notes, but it had a little ribbon. So as you go, you can hit the note and then kind of move your finger up and down. And it created extra modulation, which was totally rad. Um, so anyway, that's another synth that I think is totally amazing. Totally usable. Uh, if you have an iPhone, a lot of this stuff works on iPhone as well. Um, but I prefer the iPad um, because it's just larger and more tactile and, and usable. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was actually um, logic related. And a lot of people keep asking me the difference between um, using 32-bit and using 64-bit. So Snow Leopard was actually an operating system where you could use either a 32-bit kernel in your operating system or a 64-bit kernel in your operating system. Now, here's the deal. With those of you that are on Snow Leopard, the kernel or the, um, the yeah, the kernel of the operating system, it should stay in 32-bit because everything will run. It'll run 64-bit programs and it'll run 32-bit programs. However, if you boot it into a 64-bit kernel, uh, it may not run some of the things that you want to run. Now, that may sound kind of weird. Okay, well, if my operating system's running a 32-bit, how can it possibly run a program at 64-bit, like an application at 64-bit? Well, it can. I actually, <laughs> I went to Apple and uh, Gerhardt, uh, who was part of the original eMagic team, told me, why are you booting into 32, or why are you booting into 64-bit? You don't need to. And all your plugins will work if you do 32-bit. And I was like, okay. And apparently, Logic, if it's running in 64-bit on a 32-bit operating system, will still be able to access all the RAM and CPU and all that jazz. Oh, I guess I should talk about that, right? What's the difference between 32-bit and a 64-bit operating system and, and applications and all that? If you run an application at 32-bit, uh, it basically can only access about 3 gigabytes of RAM, no matter how much RAM you have in your machine. 
So what you want to do, uh, if you have a 64-bit program, you need to tell it to be 64-bit. And here's how you do that. Um, I'm going to hide logic for a second, and I'll open up applications, go to L for logic, hit logic pro and do a get info. So when I do a get info, there's a little button here that says open in 32 bit mode, right? So if you open in 32 bit mode, even if you're in a 64 and see, this is crazy. Cause even if you're in a 64 bit kernel, uh, in lion, it'll still open. Now in, um, in snow leopard, you might still have some problems. Okay. So open in 32-bit mode. I turn that off, and then Logic will open in 64-bit mode and have access to all of that RAM that I have. And also, it um, it spreads out the, the workload amongst the CPUs better. It's just much cooler to run in 64-bit. Now, like I said before, uh, Snow Leopard can either be 32-bit or 64-bit. And basically, the way that you boot into the kernel, if you want to boot into a 32-bit kernel, you boot up your computer and you hold down three and two on your keyboard and it'll boot into the 32-bit kernel. Now, does it do 64 if you hold down six and four? I believe it does, but you don't wanna do that. Not in Snow Leopard. Wait until you go to Lion, because when you go to Lion, it's all 64-bit, but it's totally cool with the 32-bit programs that you still have on your machine. Now, caveat, when you go to Lion, there are going to be some programs that cause you problems. Um, programs that used to run on like PPC, which is a G5 or anything like that, that's not an Intel chip, you're probably going to have issues. But um, pretty much everything else, anything that's been running on an Intel chip is going to be fine. If you're running on a G5, you can't even upgrade to Lion, but if you do get another computer, you're going to be very careful about, um, you want to make sure that you archive all your projects and you have anything that that was running uh, a program or a plugin that was uh, native to the G5, you'll want to make sure that you bounce those out as audio or do something to archive your songs, okay? I, I just went through this whole big thing about archiving all of my Logic 7 songs, and um, I, actually tricked, I actually tricked my computer into opening Logic, which was kind of funny. Um, uh, Logic 7.2.3, which isn't even supposed to run in Lion, uh, but I found this way to do it, and I don't think it's a problem anymore. I think you can actually open the application directly, like I have my Logic key attached, and I could just double-click on Logic Pro 7 and it'll open. Of course, I have a little, yeah, I customized the icon. Okay, forgive me, I'm a geek. Um, but if I right-click on Logic Pro 7 and say Show Package Contents, for those of you who can't get Logic 7 to open and you absolutely need it, you still, you still can open it. You just have to go to Contents, and uh, let's see, I believe it's uh, Mac OS. And then you double click on this Logic Pro. It looks like a Unix file, but it'll just open up, okay? So those of you who still need to op open Logic 7.2.3 and you upgrade to Lion, you're like, oh, they're all giving us the finger now. No, you can still open it. You just kind of have to, you know, jump through a couple of flaming hoops of fire. All right, so that's that. I'm kind of hitting you with a machine gun <laughs> of information, but... Lastly, I want to show you just where to look to see if your operating system, if the OS, is actually booting in 64 or 32-bit. If I go to the About This Mac, and on, on this Mac, I'm going to go to More Info, which opens up this screen. So this is what Lion looks like. Um, but when you hit More Info on Snow Leopard, it'll look something more like this, okay? Come down here to where it says software applications. I'm sorry, actually software is what you want. And it says 64-bit kernel and extensions are enabled, yes. If you're running Snow Leopard, that'll probably say no. And that's fine. You can run 32-bit kernel and all of your stuff will run beautifully. All right, so that's it. Now you know how to run 64-bit programs and you know how to make them open in 32-bit. And uh, the last thing I wanted to say was that if you, if you add a new plugin to your system and you know that that plugin is 32-bit, what you'll want to do is actually open Logic in 32-bit mode, let it scan all your plugins, and then open it again in 64-bit mode, and your 32-bit plugins will be there. Okay, so there's so much that we have to catch up on, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot to talk about and I'm happy to be back here for a second. 
I had a little breather room and um, I hope that that information helps you out. And if you've got an iPad or an iPhone, just check out SampleWiz, Geo, and Animog. They're just stuff that you can actually use and they're a lot of fun. And when it comes to this whole like MIDI control over a Wi-Fi network, I mean, Geo is like, that's my first foray into that realm and I'm just really digging the hell out of it. So if you guys are interested, maybe I'll do like a how to hook Geo up to, um, to Logic. Uh, a little later as well. All right, so that's it for me for now. Uh, that was a super long video, but it's been a long time. So um, thank you, th thank you again for visiting Pyramind, for visiting Mac Pro Video, and checking out that stuff. You know, Pyramind, I do uh, the training center that I work at in San Francisco, and Mac Pro Video. I'm doing a lot of tips and tricks and workflow stuff, and there's more stuff coming. Uh, so hope you guys are having a great time, and thank you so much for hanging out. And uh, I try to answer as many emails as I can. And I will, um, I'm thinking about maybe just formatting my videos a certain way so that um, at the end, maybe I have like listener mail or something like that. Yeah, I've been listening to too much stuff you should know. But that's because I listen to NPR because I don't ever listen to music in my car anymore. I listen to NPR. What's up with that? I'm babbling now. Ciao. <laughs>